uh, would these actually be fit for purpose? Would they be, um, would they work? Is there research behind them? What's going on with these boot camps? So Karen Shaw on Newstalk ZB over the weekend asking about what's what's the evidence? What does the evidence say, Minister Shaw? Karen, there has been some concern raised around the effectiveness of this this style. It is quite a controversial po- policy for some people. Have you, has this been created, f- you know, with evidence? <laughs> you know, has has says you know evidence been used to come up with a plan here that you know is going to work? Um. No. Um, we've looked at programs that we've run in the past. We've looked overseas at programs that have... Looked at what we've done in the past, looked at overseas so far. That's what you're saying. Just make it clear, everyone. Looked what we've done in the past, looked overseas. Been run. Um, but what I would also like to say is what I inherited when I came in as children's minister... Finished. That's, there's the research. Like, finished. Moving on. Just make it clear, moving on now. Looked at what we did, looked overseas. That's it. So that's up to them, the answer to what's the evidence. This was not acceptable. Uh, these young people were sitting in these youth justice facilities with no hope for the future. Uh, if I can add some hope for the future and some rehabilitation for these young people, which was much more than what they were getting, and what they were getting was not working. And the evidence to that is the crime out in our communities right now. Um, so if we can give something a go, that will make a real difference in these young people's lives and in our communities and lessen the harm in our communities, um, then I'm all for it. So you're confident? That- so this is the, so what's just happened is she said, what we did in the past, what other people have done, that's our evidence. And then the response is, as is always, blame Labour. Labour bad, that was the other part of that answer. Now she's going to get asked, you know, do you, are you saying that these are definitely going to work? And guess what, Tree? Hmm, she won't answer that question. Hmm. These camps will make a difference. Uh, I'm confident um, that we're doing everything we possibly can to make a difference in these young people's lives, uh, but let's not let's not be uh, uh, let's not ignore the fact that um, it may not work for every young person. Yeah, um, that's it. So it may not work for every young person. Can you give us some commitments that it's going to work? Nah, it's not going to work for everybody. So that's where she's at. Chewy, it's all pretty um, pretty standard. Um, from this uh, national government uh, telling us uh, their research involves what they used to do and what other people do, uh, Labour bad, and this is not going to work for some people. Your thoughts? That was such a such a fucking, just begging for a follow-up question. Oh, we've looked at what we've done in the past. Okay, did, yeah. did any of those work? No. Did it work? No. It's super high recidivism rate, but moving on. Okay, but did you look anywhere else? Yes, we looked overseas. And did any of their boot camp programs work? Uh, well, no. Uh, no, no, they didn't. Like, famously, none of these boot camp courses work. The only ones that do are the ones where the participants are volunteers. Yeah, well, it's an interesting it's you would say that. It's the only actually. time it works. Well, what comes out in this interview is these participants are volunteers because there's actually no laws to do this right now. They can't legally do this. They can't legally put someone in. So this first section is volunteers, and then they're going to give the um, judges the power to do it. So it's just something, I didn't know that either, something to put out there. Second part of the conversation. um, Now look, the other thing is, this is a Sunday morning show that's kind of a magazine style show, so it's not a hard news show. Francesca Rudkin is a fantastic broadcaster. Many people will have heard her before on places like RNZ. She's, she's, this used to be um, Kerry Woodham's slot from nine till midday on a Sunday morning. So whilst I agree with you, Chewy, I would love to have been in that seat and be able to go, and then what, and then what, and then what. It's kind of not the style of this this um, magazine style show it's all more more to, uh, it's sort of more conversational and you know um soft i don't want to say light-hearted well safe, safe. Like, but but the same for everybody you know soft and safe for everybody no matter who you are in there uh so the conversation does go on to talk about abuse and care and, and how that relates to boot camps and um let's just continue on and see what they've got to say about that less than a week after the release of the abusive mm. care report and of course um you know that report talks about the abuse in boot camps mm. which happened in the 1990s. Mm. What is in place to make sure that's not going to happen here? Yeah, first of all... Great question. Yeah, real good question. Mm-hmm. And here yep. comes... Um, she answered it. Let's, I'll be fair, whether you believe or agree with the answer, there is an answer to that. I'd just like to acknowledge what those young people suffered on Great Barrier Island. Uh, Te Whakapakare uh, program... Um, and what they went through there. Uh, 
these people should never have been allowed near young people. Um, there was no training um, with the staff that were, ta- were meant to be taking care of those young people. It was an isolated island. It was a perfect storm um, for perpetrators, um, and it should never have happened. Uh, what I can say is that we have put in place a program um, where young people will have access uh, to, to help if anything is untoward happening, and my expectation is that it will be dealt with quickly and those young people will be believed and those young people will not be treated um, the way that those young people on Great Barrier Island were. Uh, that was coming. There you go. So there, um, there's some things put in place. Uh, they are putting some things in place, more so than the last uh, situation. But, you know, it then just has come back to, do you think that this government can actually do it, Chui? Because that's always a big question around what these guys are doing. Yeah. Um yeah, like it's it's just great acknowledging that a previous attempt has, has failed horribly. Um as an example of like it definitely won't happen this time. Um it's fantastic. The time the timing shoddy, the methodology's shoddy, you know, nine out of ten of those kids, they're moldy. Yeah. Cool. But like that oh, it's just so bad. It's it's so so bad. Yeah, no, look, and I, and I agree with you. Like, I guess, and I'm not saying give them credit, but I am saying that they do have answers in place for some of the things that they're being criticised for. L- like we just said, these are volunteers. They're not um, like the, they've had the option given to them by judges, but not they can't be sentenced by judges. But when you say they're volunteers, I mean, I would assume the other is either go here or go here. So it might be sort mm-hmm. of a um, a forced choice but it is still a choice. And um, again, they do give answers for what's happening after the three month period. So this is actually a 12 month course. The first three months are in care, you know, that sort of thing. And then there's nine months when they're back out in the community. Uh, Well, here again, there are some answers here. It just depends whether you believe them or not, or whether you think they can fulfill them or not. Um, So this last kind of 60 to 90 seconds is what happens after the three months in care? And then how do you measure success, which I think is probably the most important thing. How do you measure success for this? Uh, That was unacceptable um, and absolutely gut-wrenching to read about. uh, But this is not what we're doing here. Karen, just very quickly for a listener who's asked, look, where do the boys go after the first three months once they've been in the camp? Uh, So the the biggest focus that we have is in the nine months of transition back into the community, uh, making sure that that's done safely and done well, whether that's supporting the family with the young person coming back home or supporting the young person uh, into employment or into a home. Um, They'll also have a a one-on-one mentor that will follow them through the whole process who will help them navigate what they need as they go along. Uh, It's an intensive case management for each young person when they go back out into the community uh, to make sure that they have the supports. When things do get tough, they have somebody that's backing them and helping them. And finally, Karen, how do we measure the success of this pilot? Uh, then what we need to do also is, in the past, we haven't collected the right data to understand what has happened once these young people have left uh, these military-style camps or academies like the MAC program. Uh, and we need to actually understand uh, where the failings are. So so we will be following these young people quite closely, uh, seeing how, how they uh, transition back into the community and pivot as needed uh, so that when we do continue this program in the future, we can learn as we go along. Now, Chewy, if a Labour Party came out and said there are some young people who need a lot, see, this is the difference, right? These people are basically saying there are these young people who, this is how it feels, young people who need to be punished, this is how we're punishing them. If a Labour government came in and said there are some young people that need to be helped, what we're going to do is we're going to give them three months of intensive uh, help in a, in a set-up situation, then they're going to be nine months where there's support for them and their family. They're going to have a one-on-one mentor for a full 12 months. It's going to support them because when things get really tough, you'd probably go, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound like a, a terrible method. Now, because that's what Viv said, that's what she just said. I wrote it down and she was saying it. Support, when they, once they come out, support for family, support for uh, the young person, one-on-one mentor for 12 months, uh, and support when things get tough. That is like a brochure. Don't sound terrible. So what's the story? How can we trust? What's the what's the um how how are they going to outwork this? 
Do you know what this feels like, Pat? Tell me. Going into the election, tough on crime. Boot camps. We all remember boot camps, right? Military discipline. Rah, rah, rah. Yep. yep. Now they're in and they, they really have to sell it to everyone, not just their own voters. Yep. So now we get the wraparound support bubble that would not have bought them votes last year. Yeah. Yes. That, that, that sounds too nabby pamby, doesn't it? No, but what but what you're implying is you're implying it's not a terrible sounding plan. And I'm kind of going, no. eh, look, that, for example, DJI makes a really good point. What support? Yeah, that's really good point. No. Give us details. This one-on-one -on -one mentoring, tell us. Want to know details. Yeah. Who's it going to be? What What are their qualifications? Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's that sort of stuff. Like, if she's saying, yeah, look, there's going to be long-term support, mentoring, and monitoring, fantastic. Tell us more details about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is, is this just going to be like, well, we say mentor, but mentor in the same way that a parole officer is, is a mentor. Yeah. You know, uh, again, wh where is the evidence? What, what are you, are you making this up on the fly? Because this, none of this was mentioned beforehand and it yeah. just seems to have been drip fed out on, on the show. It's, it's not, it's not high up there as far as what they want to tell people about. And it is, awfully thin on actual hard information yeah well, like as peter, I will, as peter I, says I, here in the super chat thank you for the super chat yeah. the devil is in detail 100 i am absolutely happy to eat crow if this is the one time a boot camp program works if, if these guys are shunted off the path that they're on um and they all get good jobs and live long happy lives fantastic but we keep coming back to the fact that that has that's not what we see traditionally. I wonder if part of it, and we're going to transition to the second part of this conversation because there is an article out this weekend on the conversation which looks into the research of this. I wonder if, in part, okay, let me put on my Pollyanna glasses. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Pollyanna, rose tinted glasses, like everything is going to be fine. Everything's wonderful. Those glasses that. Did National play, um, you know, hardball to get the votes because they knew that their racist underbelly of New Zealand would vote for them if they said tough on crime? And are they now going to deliver something that's less stringent with they, what they told people? Now, I don't, I don't feel like that is the case. But like I said, if a, if a Labor Green government came out and they said, you know, one on one mentor for twelve months, supporting when things get tough, you know, support for the fam, uh, for the far no, support for the young person after a three month block course. Probably we wouldn't roll an eye at that. We'd probably go, oh, that sounds pretty good. So is it that we just don't believe them, don't trust them? Is that what it is? And do they are they the group because they've changed so much from what they pledge and are not doing and have bought in things that they never pledged to do that it's like, okay, if you say that, now prove it, like you said. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's that's generally the vibe that I'm with. You know, and again, this this seems to be like full wraparound support and surveillance and ongoing mentorship and that sort of thing. You know, we've talked a little bit about the cost of this, mm -hmm. and 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 look, I, I'm going to be the first to cop to the fact that, like, again, if it if it punts these guys out of the path that they're on, then it's money well spent. Yeah, half a you million. know, half half a million dollars, but. It, it just seems awfully convenient that that it is a blank check, no expense spared for something like this, and everything else we've spoken about has to be penny pinched. So Gold says we don't believe or trust them. That's a fair position given their recent history. Um, there was another one by our brother Mark says uh, that's what it is. I'm assuming that's a response to what I just said. We just don't trust them. So let's move slightly for this conversation. And let's go into this article um, written by a couple of academics, one based at uh, AUT, I think, and one based in um, Melbourne. The title is, uh, and this is the interview I stuffed up today, guys, and I'm sorry again by that, it was completely my fault, but we'll just go through a couple of parts from it and see what they say. Gang crackdown, why anti-patch policies backfire and what would actually work. It's a very good article. We'll try and link it in the description. You should go have a look for yourself. And this just actually, the reason I wondered that question out loud was because this is the part I've highlighted in the start of this, Joey says, taxpayers may approve of such additional government spending if the policies work. And this is talking about um, hearts, you know, 
being hard on crime, right? But the mm. research evidence suggests these costly anti-gang measures may well have the opposite of the desired effect. Now, this is talking about gang patches, but if you think about um, this from a 16-year-old in, in a boot camp, right, and being labelled a criminal, that kind mm. of thing. An Australian gang law expert, Mark Locksh, has noted there is, quote, no, oh, sorry, not quite as a link. There is no conclusive data that gang busting legislation reduces gang related crime. Some suggest such measures may simply push criminal activity further underground. Under the heading uh, How Anti Gang Police Policy sorry, Backfire, as one Norwegian study recently found, criminal justice involvement increases rather than decreases criminal behavior. Right? So the more involvement that a person has with the criminal justice system, the more it increases criminal behavior. That's what the data says. And now think about the boot camps, right? I said, I'll read it again. As one Norwegian study recently found, criminal justice involvement increases rather than decreases criminal behavior. The study surveyed individuals at high risk of offending, right? You hear high risk offenders, that's what we've been hearing, over a period of 30 years. There's a, long, there's a longitudinal study for you. Ooh, one group was exposed. One group was exposed to frequent police contact, while the other was not. The former group, that's the one exposed to frequent police contact, uh, reported committing more crimes than the latter. The researchers concluded contact with police quote labels end quote individuals as criminals who then act accordingly to that label. Simply put. Frequent police contact can mean more crimes being committed. More crimes also mean more people being victimized. Right, so let that sink in. Now, are these boot camps going to be uh, more contact with police, with the justice system, with that side of the world? Are these, are these kids being labeled criminals? Does that therefore mean, as the research would show, they're going to therefore act out as criminals? And, and when you ask Karen Shaw on Newstalk ZB, what, is, what evidence do you have to, to do this with? And she goes, oh, what we used to do and uh, what they do in Australia. And you've got a 30-year longitudinal study that you could go to if you wanted to. Uh, under the title, What Expert Knowledge Can Offer, the article says this, gang members, their whānau and organisations, oh yeah, you'll like this one, Joey, that provide social support for so-called hard to reach communities anyone remember that there's a little group called hard to reach know who runs that hard to reach communities have extensive experience with previous government gang policies these non-academic experts know what works fails and backfires but their vast institutional knowledge continues to be ignored or dismissed by policymakers. Now there's a paragraph here that I'll read out that I haven't highlighted. It says this. See if you notice any of these names, Joey. Among okay. them are Harry Tam, Andrew oh, Wilkinson, and Joanna Wilkinson from HTR Hard to Reach Research and Consulting, a, su a social support provider focused on community-led solutions. They explain how gangs originally formed in response to structural racism in post-war New Zealand as outlined in this week's Royal Commission Abuse and Care Report. What they're saying is every time Mr. Luxon says, why would I talk to Harry Tam? This is the answer. Because they, I'll read it again, shall I? Gang members, their whānau and organisations that provide social support for so-called hard to reach communities have extensive experience with previous government gang policies. These non-academic experts, like Harry Tam, Mr. Luxon, who you refuse to interact with, know what works, fails, and backfires. So, when you go onto a television show and someone says, would you talk to Harry Tam? And you go, why would I talk to him? Because these non-academic experts know what works. I've got one more little bit, Joey. I know you're kind of fizzing to get in there, but let's just do this last bit. I think I've got one more little bit. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's very end here. So this is uh, under the heading evidence as the basis of policy. We argue, the authors, the current anti-gang policies will not reduce crime, but they are likely to further alienate hard to reach communities. Policies informed by evidence and expert knowledge will not only result in better understanding of gangs and the patch, 
they would also be more effective in protecting the interests of the public in general. So I know that we were talking about Karen Chaw in the boot camps, but I wanted to bring that in as well, because you can see if these if these kids are being labelled as serious offenders, if they're being labelled as criminals, and if they're having more interactions with the justice system, the research would show they're going to offend more, not less, Chewy. There you go, sir. Yeah. Have a crack. Yeah. Like, there there are so many long-term studies that, should, like, I'm not surprised by that Norwegian study at all. Um, like, if you feel like law enforcement or, I guess, you know, the government or the the machine of government is constantly on you, why would you buy into what they want you to do? Like, just, just from a human point of view. Like, if someone tries to force you to do something, your natural human response is to dig your heels in and go, no, no, yeah. you want me to be part of this society that doesn't see value in me? Fuck you. I'm not going to. And that's where the gangs came from. These were... The, the gang started with organizations just like what we're talking about now. Kids in care. Kids in state care. Kids that were taken away from their parents because they were unruly. Uh, or, or their parents weren't up to snuff, according to the state. Yeah, And that's where the gangs come from. We've just had this huge crown and crow inquiry into what went on there. Till 1999, and then as we know, everything stopped and it was all better now. <laughs> Everything's um, fine now. And 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 yet again, we've got a government that is going back to the trough, the same old stagnant, piss-filled trough for ideas that haven't worked in the past. But this time we will. This time we've listened. This time we've looked at a different country. Not any of the Scandinavian countries. The yeah, other ones yeah. where we are where we agree with the, the tough on crime rhetoric, like the Australians are being with gangs and stuff like that. Those guys haven't solved their problem. Like it's it's always there. It's, if someone's out there that has solved this problem and has a happy, coherent society because of it, why don't we look at that? No, no, we'll look at the UK, we'll look at Australia, and we'll look at the US all famously fucked when it comes to crime and punishment, especially with you, especially yep. with indigenous populations. doesn't make any sense. We keep fucking doing it. And that's all because at an individual level, people sort of go all fucking return to monkey and go, a bad person need punished. And that's the immediate thing. Yes, people need consequences and that sort of thing. But at the bigger side of things you can go well hang on what why has this happened you know yes this this kid is gonna have to have some consequences for for fucking whatever he did but why is he like this yeah and how can we stop the next generation we need to break the wheel and that is something i'm sure harry would agree with me on this that that once they're in there and they're broken and they get out and they have kids and they have broken families and then we just do it again and we do it again and we do it again. And I kind of think that Karen Shaw knows this. I kind of think she's 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 there. But then he's gone completely the wrong direction.